Well, hello again, everyone. I hope that everyone is doing well. I'm sure that everyone is just all up and about just trying to get ready for these holidays um, to come and go. <laughs> but in any case, I hope that everyone is doing well. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of First Thessalonians, and we're going to look at that third chapter and begin at that first verse, and it reads, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear or endure, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves. Know that we are appointed thereunto or for this. For truly, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulations, even as it come to pass, and you know. For this cause or reason, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter or Satan have tempted you and our labor be in vain. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we're just so thankful for the reading and the hearing of your word. We ask even the more that you would just continue working in us both the will and to do of your good pleasure that you prepare every heart and mind even now to just hear, not only to receive, but to apply this truth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Question, how many of you have thought about it or would just consider when was the last time that you or someone you knew just stopped what you were doing, amen, and sent or went to see about someone, just to check on them, you know, just to see how someone was doing. When was the last time that you, I say, that, that your love or your care or concern moved within you to want to know their status, their state of mind, or even their well-being. Maybe it was um, through a phone call or a text message or maybe an email or even Gmail. Um, maybe it was by a letter or um, a nice card. Could have been Facebook or either um, Messenger. There are so many ways, amen, that we could communicate with each other just to get in touch with one another. And I'm not talking about um, getting in touch with someone to ask, I say, if you could uh, borrow money, <laughs> okay, uh, 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 ask if you could get them to do something for you. I'm not talking about that. But just to get in contact with them just to say hello. You know, just to ask, you know, how you feeling today? How you doing? Amen. Wanting to know how are you handling, amen, life's issues. Like... How are you handling maybe that separation, amen, or that divorce, amen? How are you handling uh, the division or the anger, the resentment or the unforgiveness uh, within your family, amen? How are you handling or dealing with that sickness or that disease in your body? How are you dealing with death, the loss of your dad or your mom or uh, your grandparents, your siblings, a friend or even a child? How are you handling, amen, or dealing with the ever-changing events of life? And how, because of even all this, how are you handling the attacks against your faith? Now, these questions are more important than what you can borrow or, or what you can get someone to do for you, amen? You see, people want to be encouraged. They want to, I say, receive comfort concerning their situations and even their faith, amen? They need to know that someone truly cares, amen? Everybody, especially these days and times, are going through something, amen? Troubles and afflictions are everywhere. Everybody is struggling with something, dealing with something, trying to hold on to something, amen? Yet we fail, listen, to praise and honor God and his son when we don't, I say, have genuine love, care, or concern for others. What they're dealing with, their pains, their situations, what they're going through. A lot of times it's just really easy to ignore it, right? Amen? Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In the world, you shall have tribulations. Listen, talking about great troubles, sufferings, difficulties, experiences, and even problems. 
He knew that these things would take place. He said, but to be of good cheer. In other words, he was telling us to have hope. Amen. He says, don't be discouraged and don't doubt your faith. Amen. I have overcome the world. And according to this word, as he says he has overcome the world, we as believers, we have too. By our love for God and for our love for one another and by our faith in his word. Amen. And you can reference that in John the 16th chapter and the 33rd verse and also 1 John the 5th chapter and the 4th verse. So even though we have, have, I say, or have been told that, that we would go through these things or these things would come, amen, and you know, we shouldn't be moved. We shouldn't really be getting upset. We shouldn't be really uh, falling out because of them. Because of these afflictions that come, we do anyway. Amen. They, we just, we're human. Amen. And we just get caught up in, in the, the fleshly side versus uh, the spiritual side. Yet I believe that as we mature and grow, that we will begin to acknowledge the truth. Amen. That it's not only, I say people want to say it's because of sin. It's not only because of sin or, or evil or our disobedience that causes us to be uncomfortable in this life. But I believe that the troubles are also brought about as a part of God's will, amen, for his children to build character, to learn patience, amen, and to learn how to be sensitive towards one another, amen. Look. We're always tested. You think about it now. We're always tested by trials and troubles, okay? We're always tempted with or by the same thing, listen, that we failed the last time, amen? God told Cain in Genesis, the fourth chapter, in that seventh verse, after he rejected his um, offering, he said to him, he said, if you do well, listen, shall you not be accepted? But if you don't do well, he says sin lies at the door. Now, in looking at this, you can see that God is always allowing life to give us a choice, always allowing life to give us a chance. But these tests and these trials, they come around. Why? Because he's constantly monitoring, monitoring our spiritual growth. He wants to know, are we still liars after we done been through this? Are we still adulterers after we done dealt with that? Are we still thieves? Are we still greedy? Are we still bitter about something? Are we still insensitive to others? Amen? Desiring us to grow and mature, amen, as we pass test after test and trial after trial. These things are coming for us. We look at them sometimes as a disadvantage but I'm telling you, it's how you see it, even as how God sees it. It's not to hurt you, it's to help you, amen? Because anyone would tell you it's best to learn from your ex mistakes. It's best to learn from those things that you have experienced, why? So that you can grow. And listen, even though sin, evil, and our disobedience has caused us to have to deal with the troubles of, of sickness, loss, natural disasters, and even violence, as a Christian, growing and trusting in God and in his word, we are able to what? Pass through. We're able to have the victory over situations and circumstances. We're able to have his peace. Why? Because the spirit of the living God is with us. The scripture says that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We have it, amen? We have the ability. Look at what God spoke in um, Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Uh, look at that first through the third verse. It says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel. Look, your Savior. Amen? God is concerned about you and your faith, your situations and your circumstances. Amen? And if you think about it here in the scriptures, Paul was forced to leave Thessalonica.
But he sent Timothy, look, as his representative to what? To see how they were doing, to check on them, to see what was going on. And even today, there are others, like myself, who are sent to know your status, amen? Your state of mind, and even your well-being. But a lot of times, Satan, with his lies, I hate to say, desires to sift us as wheat, to, to isolate us, that which is most important to you. There, there are those of us who do come into our lives that are maybe no good or not good, yet they had a purpose, amen? But then there are those that he sends who are good and are there to help you to grow. But because of your state of mind or how you see it, amen, it's causing you to want to be alone, to want to separate yourself and be apart, especially from those that are believers, amen? And you can reference this in Luke, the 22nd chapter, uh, the 31st through the 34th verse, and Acts, the 13th chapter, the uh, 6th through the 8th verse, amen? But as I stated before, everyone is dealing with something. And they want to be, how you say, encouraged and to receive comfort concerning their situations and their faith. Amen. We all need to know that we are loved. We all need to know that there's someone who cares about us. We all, we all need to know that we're not in this thing alone. Amen. And as believers, I will say to you, let us continue to show them that we do. Those of us that are, that are doing what you're doing, that are making sure that the elderly are taken care of, making sure that the hungry are fed, making sure that the homeless have somewhere to be, continue to do what you do. But there are those, amen, who feel like they're all alone. And you have to remember, we are who we are, according to God's words, his representatives, amen. And we are to represent him in the earth. And so if you see that someone is in need, if you can, help. Amen. Do whatever you can to help. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus, asking that you would forgive us, for we have all sinned. Forgive us for the numerous times that we have failed to glorify you and to honor you and your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we have failed by being poor examples through uh, situations and circumstances. We have failed through pain and disappointments, how we handled it, oh God. We have failed through relationships and partnerships, oh God. Holy Father, we have failed in representing you and your word, amen, to the human race. Every time we lied, we failed. Every time we ignored someone's pain, oh God, we failed. Every time we trusted in anyone or anything but you, oh God, we have failed. So Holy Father, have mercy and help all that truly ask you because we need you. And continue to send those that you will to know our status and our state of mind, oh God, and our well-being to continue to check on us. And it is in Jesus' name that we ask this. Amen and amen. Again, we just want to say thank you for joining us on today. We ask that you would visit our website, that you would like, share, and subscribe. We ask that you would continue to read your word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We ask even the more that you would continue to pray, be helpers one of another according to his word. Remember that God loves you, I love you, and we'll see you next time.
entrance into heaven. We praise you, Lord. Our way, our truth, our life eternally. Resurrection, salvation. We love you and we bless